Hey Code Crew, how's it going? In today's video, I'll teach you guys how to implement ads into your apps. Specifically, we're going to be using Google AdMob to implement banner ads and you know, it couldn't be easier to do as you're going to see. Now, before we begin, one word, if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. And if you're brand new to iOS app development, you're in the right place. Be sure to check out my beginner video series, which I'll link to right now, because watching that is going to equip you with all of the proper skills you need in order to understand what's going on in this video. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to admob.com and create a new account because that's where you're going to see your stats. You're going to get paid essentially. So you're going to want to do this. Go to admob.com, sign in with your Google account or sign up for a brand new account. And once you do, you're going to get to some sort of dashboard like this, or you might get like a quick start wizard that's asking you to add a new app. Uh, go ahead and click that because we're going to need to create an admob app. Now I already created this as a demo, so I'm just going to click on add app here. But I think when you first start your brand new account, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. Uh, since we're starting a new demo, we're going to click no for this. We're going to enter in our app information and also enable or select iOS for our platform. I'm going to call this the ads demo and I'm going to click add. And this app ID is very important because uh, when we display an ad inside our app, we're going to need to uh, take note of this app ID. That is what links those ads to this ad mob app that we're creating. Okay, we're not going to create an ad unit now. Just go ahead and click I'll do it later. Now the next step is to create our Xcode project for the actual app where we're going to display our banners. So let's create a brand new Xcode project. We're going to choose single view application. I just call this the ads demo as well. I'll just um, okay. So I'll click next. I'll save it on my desktop here. And take note of that bundle ID. That's sort of the unique identifier for your Xcode project. Now that we have this project created, we need to add the AdMob SDK or the libraries into our project. Now, if you happen to be using Firebase, this is going to be very easy because the AdMob service is actually part of the Firebase platform. So in the process of installing Firebase, you can also install AdMob. And if you're not familiar with Firebase, I've done a whole bunch of tutorials covering it. Uh, it's basically a remote database that you can use. It's offered by Google. Um, and so you can store and retrieve data. It's very easy to use and it's got a very generous free tier. So I highly recommend it. If you're not using Firebase, you can still download the AdMob libraries separately and add them into your Xcode project. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the Firebase way. So if we go back to the AdMob dashboard, there's actually a very easy link uh, to proceed to link it to a Firebase project and then get those uh, Firebase libraries and add mob libraries installed. What you're going to do is come back here and then click on some of these icons are uh, hard to understand what they are, but if you hover over them, you're going to see it. Go to app settings and then there is, see there's your app ID that you're going to need and Firebase link. So you can go ahead and just click this. Um, there is some sort of policy that you can read Let's confirm that. And we're going to need the bundle ID. So this is very important because it can't be changed later. We're going to come here and grab our bundle identifier for our project and then come back here and just paste it in there. And it's going to let us continue. It can't find a specific Firebase project for this guy. And so I'm going to create a brand new Firebase project. Uh, I'm going to call this the ads demo click continue and it's creating a new Firebase project in the Firebase console for us. It's kind of equivalent of coming here into your Firebase console and then adding a brand new project except that it's just doing it here for us. So it's successfully linked the ad demo that we created in AdMob to a Firebase project that it just created for us. So if we refresh this Firebase console page, we should be able to see it. And let's see, there it is, other projects using Firebase. So we haven't finished setting this guy up yet. At this point, it's 
telling us to go over to the Firebase documentation to set up the Firebase project. So we'll just click done here. And in the app settings, you can see now it's linked to that Firebase project. Going back to the Firebase console though, we can now finish setting up this Firebase project. Uh, choose data sharing. All right, Google wants us to share some data with them. For you, you should actually read those. <laughs> For me, uh, since this is just um, a demo application, I'm not as concerned. So we need to set things up here. Let's click on this guy. We're going to need to download this Google service info.plist because this guy contains all of the configuration settings to point to this Firebase instance. So we're going to need to download this file and add it to our Xcode project. So let's go ahead, download it. I'll just save it on my desktop and then I'm just drag it into your Xcode project like that. Uh, make sure that copy items if needed is enabled as is targets uh, for that guy right there. All right, so we have it added here. Now, what we're gonna do is just close that Xcode project because now we're going to use something called CocoaPods to get those Firebase and add mob libraries into our Xcode project. If you're unfamiliar with installing Firebase with CocoaPods, or if you don't have CocoaPods installed in your system, I'm gonna link to a couple of other videos that I've done uh, right now and you can get CocoaPods installed on your system first so you have this package manager which helps you manage all these third-party libraries that you're using it's pretty standard stuff and it's definitely something that you're going to want to have if you're going to be building different apps utilizing third-party SDKs like we're doing now so CocoaPods is um, a must or a really good thing to have and then the next thing would be using CocoaPods to get the Firebase and AdMob libraries. Now we're gonna do that together here using CocoaPods, but if you want a slower tutorial um, where I walk through everything in much more detail, you can watch my Firebase quick start video, which I'll also link to right now. All right, so let's go ahead and use CocoaPods to install the Firebase and AdMob libraries. We are, yeah, you can see how I did it for a previous demo, but Essentially, let me close this first so that um, we get a fresh start. We're gonna open up Terminal here, and we are going to navigate to our project folder. Now, I've saved it on the desktop, so I'm gonna go ahead and navigate there. So here I am. We're gonna type in pod space init to basically initialize our project to use CocoaPods. I'm gonna double click my folder here, and here I've got this pod file. I'm gonna open it up in a text editor like that. And we are going to add a couple of pods. So one of them we need is Firebase Core. And this is all of the uh, Firebase, kind of like the basic libraries and classes that we're gonna need. And then we're also going to add add mob. And keep in mind that this M has to be capitalized. If you do a lowercase M, it's not going to recognize it. Let's save this file and let's jump back into the terminal and type in pod install. Now it's gonna go out and fetch those libraries. It's gonna be really fast for me here because I've done it before. And so for you, it might take a little longer. Take note of this though. We're gonna to have to use the XC workspace file from now. If you have Xcode open right now, go ahead and close it so you don't get confused. This is what you used to open. Now we're gonna open this. So go ahead and open XC workspace. In your file navigator under pods, you're gonna see all of these different libraries that's downloaded for you. Go ahead and hit command B to build your project just to make sure that everything is working right now. All right, build succeeded so we can go on. Uh, the next thing to do is go into app delegate where we are going to, uh, basically when the app launches, we want to tell it to uh, initialize Firebase and configure it for use. So in the app delegate.swift at the top, we're going to import Firebase. And then in the view did finish launching with options here, we're going to type in Firebase app dot configure. And we have to do this before the return statement, All right? So this is initialize Firebase. We also have to initialize uh, add mob. 
So if we go back to the documentation, and I'll, I want to make this a habit for you to go through, and I'll show you where in the documentation it is. If you just go into the Firebase documentation, on the left-hand side, scroll all the way down under Google AdMob, under iOS, get started. It's going to tell you all of the information that we're going to do right now. So installing the Firebase SDK, we've done that. Create an AdMob account. We also did that. Register an app, did that. Link the app to a Firebase project, we did that. Uh, and so this is where we're at right now. We're adding these two pods, right? We did a pod install. Uh, and now we need to initialize uh, the add mob SDK. So you can see import Firebase, did that. Firebase app.configure, did that. And now this part is what we need to do. GAD mobile ads.configure with application ID. And this is our add mob app ID. So you go into your add mob account. That's where this ID is going to be needed. Let's copy app ID. Let's go here. GAD mobile ads dot configure with application ID. Create a string with that. And that's where that goes. Let's go back to the documentation here. You scroll down. There are different ad formats that we can use. We can do a banner, interstitial, native, record a rewarded video. So I'll let you read those descriptions. We're going to create a basic ad banner. That's the one that everyone knows and loves. I don't know about loves, but <laughs> knows for sure. Uh, we're going to scroll down here. This is very important. Always test with test ads because if you're showing live ads in your simulator, uh, an advertiser is paying dollars for that view and you're technically not showing it to anybody that's really going to click it and provide a return on investment for that advertiser. So if if you do that a lot, your account will probably get banned. When you're testing and building your app, you want to be using this, this specific ID here, which will show test ads and no one's going to be paying any money to for those ads. They're just placeholder ads. So we're going to take note of that. We're going to use that in a second. We're going to need to create a GAD banner view. This is the class that's used to display that banner. And there's two ways of doing it. You can do it programmatically. So I'll, I'll walk through this way with you first. You import Google Mobile Ads. You create a uh, GAD banner view property. And then in the view did load, you can instantiate it with a uh, whatever size you want. And after that, you set translates auto resizing mask into constraints to false because you're going to be specifying those uh, auto layout constraints yourself. So you don't want uh, the system to automatically convert that auto resizing mask into constraints for you. Then you're going to add that view into the root view of your view controller. And then finally, you're going to add the constraints. In this case, they are centering it. And then they're also um, adding a bottom attribute. Now there's a note here that says we don't give it a specific height or width as the provided ad size will give the banner an intrinsic content size to size the view. So it's talking about this guy right here. This ad size that you're passing in kind of gives that banner view an intrinsic size. The other way to add a banner view is through the interface builder. And for the sake of the beginners watching this video, I'm actually going to do it this way. Now, in this way, we are going to be using the storyboard, we're going to be adding the banner view and then specifying a height and width that we want to uh, get ads for. And then we're going to position it, then we're going to connect this banner view as an IB outlet property so we can trigger the ad for it. Now the, the thing is, you're not going to find GAD banner view in the storyboard. So we jump into the storyboard here and we open up the object library. That's this button up here, you type in GAD banner view, you can't you can't find it, right? Uh, what you do is in the view controller, you can import uh, GAD or Google Mobile Ads, and you can take a look at this class, GAD banner view. What sort of class is this a subclass of? And if you just hold down uh, option on your keyboard and click it, you can see that its subclass is UI view. So essentially, you just need to add a UI view into your storyboard and set the custom class to GAD banner view. So let's erase that, come back here, and we are going to add a UI view. 
and we are going to set the height and width of this guy to 320 by 50 as the documentation said. We are going to horizontally center this guy and we are going to add a bottom constraint of let's say let's say 20. And you can see our banner there. It's white on white as you can't really see it, but when we display an add in there, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I almost forgot. Highlight that UI view. Set the custom class to GAD banner view. <laughs> if you don't do that, it's just going to be a basic UI view. Now go into the assistant editor. We are going to connect this banner view here as an IB outlet. Let's call this banner view. And then let's go back to the documentation. Let's go into the view controller here and see how exactly do we load up an add into that banner view element. All right, configure GAD banner view properties. So there are two that we need to set. One is the root view controller. This view controller is used to present an overlay when the add is clicked. It should normally be set to the view controller that contains the GAD banner view. So that's easy. We just set it to self. The other one is the add unit ID. Now, inside your add mob dashboard, you would be coming here to add units and you would basically create a, if you were gonna display a 320 by 50 banner ad in your app, you need to create that add unit in here and you're gonna get a specific ID for it. And then you're gonna be setting that ID here. So banner view dot add unit ID, and you're gonna set it to that banner view dot root view controller equals self. That's the second one we need to set. But remember what I told you about testing, right? So since we're testing, we are going to use their test ID. If we scroll all the way up, that's this guy right here. So we're going to use this test ad. That's the ID for that. We'll paste it in there. And then let's see what else we have to do. We're going to have to load an ad. Right, so this is the code for that banner view load and then create a new GAD request object. Represents a single ad request and contain properties for things like targeting information. Let's give that a try. Save it and then we're going to run it. So there we go, we've loaded a test ad in the bottom right there. And that's how easy it is to implement ad mob ads for your app. Now, I highly encourage you to read further. Um, remember, there are different ad formats you can do, right? Interstitial native ads and rewarded videos. And also you can listen to events for your banner view. If you handle this GAD banner view protocol and set your view controller as a delegate for it, um, you can hear events such as uh, when it's actually loaded an ad, when the request failed, and stuff like that. So I'll link to this documentation below the video so you can check it out. And if you want the source code, you'll also find it in the description below the video. So what do you think? Pretty easy, right? If you like this tutorial and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed to my channel by hitting that subscribe button below and click that little bell icon if you want to be notified every time there are new videos. Now I want to turn it over to you guys. The question of the day is, on the topic of banner ads, are you interested in building apps to make money in the app store and provide a little side income? Or are you interested in building apps just for your hobby or something else? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below and I'm going to be sure to read all of your responses. Okay, until next time, I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hey, did you join my free Facebook community yet? That's where I hang out along with a ton of other people learning iOS just like yourself. I also post early access to all of my videos inside that group before I put them on YouTube. You can also get help with any questions you're having. Visit the link below, click on the join group button, and I'll approve your request right away. Alright, so I'll see you in there. Talk soon.